God's presence uh, is so powerful. Uh, the Bible says even the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. So just being in that presence changes our lives. It heals us, delivers us. How do we get that word into our hearts? So we looked at two things. One is we looked at the parable of the sower. And in that parable, Jesus unveils to us a mystery of the kingdom. He says, you know, this is a secret which I'm unveiling about how the kingdom of God works. And he said, the sower sows the seed. The seed is the word of God. The condition of our heart is important. And he tells us, you know, if your heart is like this, it'll be good ground. So we mentioned three things. We need to understand his word. We need to receive his word. And we need to retain his word in order to see that seed produce in our life. We also talked about meditation. Both in the old, we see meditation both in the old and in the new. Uh, although not too much in the new. Uh, but meditation in the word is a very important process by which we receive that word into our hearts. And just to break that down, we gave three simple uh, steps, if you want to call it, in the process of meditation. How do you meditate in the word? First, you contemplate. Contemplation. Second, visualization. Third, confession. Right? So this is our engaging with the word. And we explain this. This is how we meditate in the word. Through meditation, through the reading of the word and the meditating in God's word, you are receiving that word on good ground into your heart. And you are nurturing that seed. And you're letting that seed be watered and, and built up in you. And faith is being built in your heart. Three simple things. You and I need to speak the word Act on the word and stand firm in faith on the word. The first story we pick up from Numbers chapters 13 and 14, uh, which is the story of uh, the people of Israel as they are getting ready to enter into the promised land. They have journeyed this far. Uh, they are close to the land of promise. And uh, God tells Moses, you know, send out 12 spies that they will go so that they can go spy out the land and then Get ready to go in, right? So they pick out one leader from each of the tribes and they send them out to spy the land. And these 12 spies come back with their reports. And they all are in agreement that the land is just the way God said it. It was a wonderful land or as you would say, it was a land flowing with milk and honey. And it, was, it was wonderful. It was good. Look at the fruit of the land. They brought some of the fruit back as well. Look at the fruit of the land. It's exactly the way God said. It's a wonderful land. But 10 of them said, and they all agreed, sorry, they also agreed that there were giants in the land. Yeah, the people in the land are really big. They're really big. And now 10 of them responded like this. You see, there are giants in the land. So that's the problem. We can't go take the land because we are like grasshoppers before them. It's a big problem. Joshua and Caleb saw the same land. They saw the same giants. But they said, God is with us. And if God is with us, they are like bread for us. So two different pictures. They saw the same giants. But remember something, uh, as Moses reminded his people in, in Deuteronomy 7 verse 1, he said, The Lord your God is with you. When you go into the land, he will cause you to overcome cities and nations mightier than you. So God had already given his word to his people. So had God given them his word? Yes. In Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. There are times you will see a miracle instantaneous. And we all love that. We all love the instantaneous miracles. And I lay hands on them and they ask, how are you good? I'm feeling good. That's great. And that's wonderful. And, and thank God. You know, that's something we want and we will press into, continue press. But thank God that, you know, sometimes, you know, even if things take a bit of time, 
you and I must learn to stand firm in faith. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. It's something we've seen before but just want to remind us. Paul is writing to the Thessalonians. He says, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. God's word is at work. God's word works. It works in the lives of those who believe that word. 